quarterback who is very talented yeah. compared to a lot of the league and a lot of the, the country. I, I wonder, is, is it easier to recruit that position when you have talent or when you don't have talent? Coach Kelly, we're official. Finally, I'm get a chance you. to meet you. Thought I had to get a private audience with the Pope. There's just, there's Jordy. Monday through Friday from seven to nine. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collider Show. And Come have a good time. Clearing up, answering the question. I thought, my God, if she gets offered this job, she's gonna take it. It's just a crazy fun time at LSU right now. Isn't this what everybody loves? From the boot to the east to the west coast, no matter where we go, we got the show. Open up the phone lines, come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collider Show. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Big day. Big day. Nice start. It's the Jordan Collider Show. Come have a good time. Coach, it's great to meet you. Thanks, sir. Thank you for the time. Welcome into a Wednesday edition of the Jordy Galata Show live here <laughs> from our Click Here Digital <laughs> Studios on this Wednesday morning <laughs> as we come to you on this uh, on this Wednesday. Make sure to hit that like button, share button, comment button, subscribe if you have not already done so as uh, we appreciate you starting your day here with us. We'll be here with you until about 9 a.m. Jacques going to be through here. Uh, Jacques Doucet will be here at, uh, at uh, 8 a.m. Uh, WAFB's 9 Bye. Sports Director. Jacques Doucet will be through here, at, uh, and we'll talk about uh, yesterday's decision by Mason Smith, the big news Jamie around LSU Mason football. <laughs> uh, defensive lineman Mason Smith declares for the NFL draft. We'll give you our thoughts uh, as uh, Smith yesterday made it official uh, for his future. Remember, Daily, we're brought to you by RMB Builders, and our phone line is directly brought to you by our friends over at Southern Regional Medical Center, Charlie Harvey, Jason Ramazan, BJ, and the entire crew over at Southern Regional Medical Center, real doctors, real solutions. We appreciate them each and every day here in RMB Builders. Remember, Rhett Bourgeois and the crew over at RMB can custom design a home for you today and build it. Uh, if you have a commercial project, uh, commercial project, uh, they can help you out with, and they can also help you uh, with your residential needs as well. Get in touch with RMB on Instagram at RMB Builders, or find them online at rmb-builders.com. Lloyd is here live on this Wednesday morning. Stewie is live here with us on this Wednesday. Uh, so we appreciate you being here. And yes, yesterday's news, Mason Smith made it official uh, that he is going to declare for the 2024 NFL Draft. Uh, the former uh, top-ranked prospect in the state of Louisiana uh, is leaving LSU after three seasons. Uh, this past year, he had 28 tackles, four and a half tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, and two, pa uh, two pass breakups in 12 games of action this season uh, for Smith. Uh, he tore his ACL uh, in the 2022 opener, which really is marred his, his time 
here at LSU after a, a pretty good freshman season where he played a ton of football coming in from Terrebonne. Um, he was the number 11 prospect in the country. He was the number four defensive tackle in the country. He was Louisiana's number one prospect uh, back in the 2021 class. Uh, he played a ton of football that year. Uh, and then in the opener versus Florida State, uh, last season in the Dome, tore his ACL very early in that game, which was just tragic. I mean, for what what was expected uh, and, and, and really the offseason that Smith had had and really the buzz around him um, was, was a devastating injury uh, for him. It took him a while to bounce back from it here in his junior season. Uh, and he started to come on the last four games of the year in particular – uh, in the Relia Quest Bowl, he played really uh, solid football, especially towards the end of the game. And you know, for for these decisions, it's always you know it's it, it's always um, a sense of reaction where look, there's an element of it that you know people in, in um, that that give their opinion and and talk about this stuff, kind of the talking heads on this. Look, we can't we can't aggregate, we can't calculate the family portion of this. We've got no business, and, and and I say we. Let me just speak in first person. I I have no business telling anyone what they should or should not do for their future when they're basing their choice on on their family and what's best for them. Who the hell am I to say anything about that? And I've got no right, nor do I believe that my opinion even matters on something like that. So for Mason Smith, the decision that he made yesterday, when it comes to the, the, the family, the personal part of it, what, whatever that was, was based on, and if he believes it's best for him to go to the NFL, then all I can do is support that. Like That's his life, that's his, his journey, his prerogative, and, and, and go get it, right? I mean, he's a Louisiana native that I want to see succeed, and, and I want to see him have a uh, a really good career in the NFL, a solid career in the NFL, and go on to play multiple years and be an all-pro and, and win at a high level. My opinion on this is, is just strictly the football portion of it, right? And I think the decision that Mason Smith made yesterday when it comes to his, his football journey was ultimately it was a mistake. I think that Mason Smith really serves – to benefit greatly by returning and having everything work out for him. And I understand that, you know, that that has to happen. It's very easy for someone like me. It's very easy for, for fans and outsiders that may not have to go through the process and put the work in and play the 15 games and put your body through that to get to a, a place where, you know, you've you've given the NFL, the scouts, the general managers, the owners, the the, the, the best case for you, right? Like this is my, my sales pitch. Here's, here's my, my, my body of work. Grade me, judge me, draft me. And for, for what Mason Smith has put down in the three years at LSU, I think he could serve really in, 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 in benefit from coming back and playing one season where he's not a true freshman coming out of Terrebonne where there's a ton of pressure on him coming in here and you're really kind of you know drinking out of a out of a, a water a, hose yeah right out of, out of a water faucet you know what i mean out of a almost a, a a water hose yeah right i mean it's just you know it's everything's coming at you so fast that you you, you can't even really you can't even really put one foot in front of the other without overthinking it year two there's a ton of expectation i mean it seems like he's going to be a breakout player nationally people are starting to kind of to chirp about Mason Smith, and within, I mean, thirty minutes of the first game kicking off, he's been, he's been, you know, taken to the locker room with a torn ACL. So it never really has a chance to get going. The same can also be said about his junior season, where he's coming off of this this ACL injury, and you know he has, you know, he's got to re rehab and recuperate himself to getting back, and in that process. He suffers another devastating football injury and a high ankle sprain late in training camp that really sets back the the whole rehab process weeks, months at that at that point. His junior season suffers for it on the field. 
The film that's being put out early is, is you know, below average at best. By midseason, you can see signs, but the, the, the play is still not significantly upticked. And by the end of the season, you're starting to see at least some glimmers and shades that, that there is the prospect that everyone has almost kind of been waiting on. A guy who looks like he's working himself into shape, a guy that looks like he's playing closer to, to full strength and health. And, you know, the thought process is go through another offseason of getting your body right and getting to 100% health, coming back for a senior season, and really being, being the guy start to finish that people anticipate you to be. Put that on film, and you might be a first-round pick. You might be a high first-round pick if you can pull that off. And where he stands right now, it'll be interesting to see where he goes because I do believe that, you know, Smith, even even in the NFL, he's a bit of an alien. You know, e even a bunch, you know, even amongst the freaks, he's a freak, at least from his body type, right? I mean, his size, his strength, his his athleticism, his ability. I mean, it's just very rare. You, 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 there won't be three Mason Smiths in this year's draft, right? I mean, there, there, there Not might even one. There might be two. Six five three fifteen. That if healthy, and if right, you know, is a is a real athlete. You know, I mean, a real a real dude that you got to be concerned about. When healthy, he's Chris Jones. Could be. It's a high ceiling, but I mean, that's a good comp. That's right? that's what I would comp him to. Like when healthy, he's Chris Jones, when not, you see what you get. So, it was very surprising to see the decision that Mason Smith made. Was it? It was. I, I thought that, I, I thought, if you would have told me this a week and a half ago before the Baker, if he would have announced with Makai Wingo, I would have not been surprised. surprised yeah. At all. I would have not. But for it to be this week. Really raise an eyebrow at it because, you know, it, it just... There was a lot of dis I mean, there was a lot of dysfunction with LSU on the defensive side of the ball, you know, towards the end of the year, and you you could sense that if they were going to retain House, that they were going to have a crusade. I mean, like they they were going to have people that that were marching out of there. And if Mason Smith was one of those guys, I don't I don't think that I would have been surprised by that. Now that you get a guy in Baker, who's familiar with Smith, by the way. I mean, he was on a staff that was a, a leading in his recruitment on the defensive side of the ball. I mean, you know, all hands on deck for the, the number one player in the state in 21, and Blake Baker's the linebacker's coach. So he's, he's very familiar with who Mason Smith is. He was obviously on that, that 21 team and staff. So, I mean, he, he's got a relationship. And the further that time went on, as Baker was on the job and you didn't hear any news for Mason Smith, I thought it was positive for LSU. I thought, you know, the, the more time that lapsed showed that LSU was really making him think. And ultimately he was just going to put out a statement that said, I'm coming back. And when the statement hit that said he was going pro, I, I was a little surprised because I mean, you've had guys in that building with the ability now to, to, to recruit and sell him, for you know what's a you know a little under a week, but enough time where you can pitch a message. And you know, I mean, I really believe that that Mason Smith's outlook from a football standpoint is very clear to paint. That look, man, last three years have not been in, have not been what you know. Like if you rewind the the tape and you say, "Hey, senior Mason Smith in high school at Terrebonne," if I tell you three years from now that you know your your best season at LSU has been your freshman year and you really only played your freshman year out of true necessity you've had a devastating injury and your junior year you know you your, your number you had 28 tackles what what would you do if you were a senior in high school and I gave you that scenario would you want to go pro I, I don't think that would be the end. I mean, I think three years ago at Terrebonne when you would say, hey, Mason Smith, what do you think your first three years at LSU is going to be? I'm going to be a freshman all-SEC. 
I'm going to be a, a all SEC performer and then I'm going to be an All-American. And we would all have been like, all right, I believe you. But now that it hasn't worked out like that, and you got a chance to come back and really put some good film down for one season, I was surprised to see that he went pro. Um, it's a little um, Anthony Johnson esque. Anthony Johnson, uh, Trev Falk, yeah, Makai Wingo, uh, not Makai Wingo, uh, Malachi Dupree, yeah, Makai um, Gardner too. You kind of Makai Gardner, sure, Makai Gardner. I just give, uh, I just Sam, call, Sam Montgomery, Quaylen Roy, to a, to a degree, because he probably could have got a little better stock. His stock probably would have went up if he stayed another year too. Just yeah, I mean, I guess you have to if you look at it in totality and what I I, I said the Anthony Johnson comp because some guys come in with a three year plan where no matter what happens they have I'm gonna their, be out of here in three years. Yeah, yeah. If everything it. I think that was Malachi Dupree. I think yeah. that was probably Mason Smith. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm comping him to yeah. Anthony Johnson, where I am the number one rated defensive lineman, defensive tackle, whatever. Number one player. Number one player. Like, all of this lines up for me staying in college for three years. I'm going to the league, regardless of what any information I'm given. I'm already dead set on being a three-year player. And I think you could even ask Mason Smith. I was like, how was your time at LSU? He's like, it did not go the way I thought it would. Whether it be the injuries and – the best tape you have of him is late in his freshman year, and the next one you can look to is the last two drives of the ReliaQuest Bowl. Mm -hmm. And I said it on this show where I was like, there's a, there's a world where he shows out in the bowl game and he feels like that's enough. If I can put something on tape where people can see me fully healthy and what I can do to wreck a football game that I can get drafted off of that, do I think it's the right decision? No. Do I understand where he's coming from? Yes, because you put – what do we always say about the draft? It only takes one. It takes one guy to look at you and go, okay. I mean, look out for the Broncos. Jamar Cain's probably going to be pounding the table for a guy like Mason Smith being like, I've coached him before. I know what we have here. I can get him right. If he's healthy, he's a game wrecker. But if you're an LSU fan, you want to see him come back and do it. At shades of what could have been, like a Malachi Dupree, Anthony Johnson, uh, Daniil Hunter, where it's, oh, man, if you put it all together for one season, this could be an absolute game changer. And that's where it comes from a college perspective of you wanted to see him do it here, where it's he is – there's no bones about it. You have a perennial first-round pick on your defensive line. And for LSU, you almost had to have him back because where are you now? Oh, wow. I mean, you know, that, that brings – you know, that kind of brings more into focus – of Not having a defensive line coach? The real story of, of where LSU is now – in the defensive line room. I mean, if we rewind the tape a little bit, right, what was Brian Kelly's first order of business here in the offseason was retention, right? And specifically in areas of need like defensive line, and when pressed on it post-game post, post -game versus Wisconsin, he felt very confident about the defensive line retention. He can't be feeling good about that this morning when he wakes up and he's lost both Wingo and now Mason Smith and and what happens now and here's here is what the room looks like from just a standpoint of 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 LSU and the defensive the defensive line room um and the numbers are are thin to say the least right Jacoby and Guillory has one year left he's a senior who has just three starts in 38 games um he, he is the defensive tackle that is coming back now you've got some guys coming in and you've got some guys coming in in this recruiting class. But as far as the guys that are on the roster currently, as we speak right now, you've got Jacoby and Guillory with a year left and three starts in 38 games. Savion Jones has a year left, plus a redshirt year. So he's got uh, – he, he could actually come back. Um, Twice. Maybe maybe two more years. But he's got 15 starts in 37 games. Braden Swenson's got a year left, two starts uh, in 42 games. Those games should be more. Um, Paris Shan has a year left. He came on and really played solid uh, this season for LSU. Deshaun Walmack is a guy who's a youngster on this team, a sophomore. He's got three years left uh, in 11 games. He had a sack and a half this past season with 11 tackles. Uh, Jackson Howard's got four years left. He played uh, some minutes this past season as a true freshman. Uh, he's played in just three games and has one tackle. 
uh, and Dylan Carpenter, who is a, uh, a true freshman uh, who redshirted this past season um, from Santa Mall, uh, played in three games and, and had one tackle as well. That's the numbers that you have coming back from LSU in a defensive line standpoint. They have some guys coming in, and, and obviously the portal will open up uh, once again in April uh, after, after spring football and, and during spring football. So uh, obviously you'll see that LSU is going to have a high priority on, on bringing back uh, or going after defensive tackles after the latest news of Mason Smith uh, pledging uh, to the NFL draft. So it, it is dire straits in, in, in some position rooms, and that position room being first is, is defensive line. LSU has got to find uh, some defensive linemen before, before next season, uh, and they've got to they've got to do that. I mean, in all ways possible. Obviously, you've got guys coming in like Don McKinley and Gabe Relaford. You've got sure. Sean Washington coming in, who's a junior college guy. Um, but you know, you'll have you'll have to get some more players in the transfer portal. Um, and, and look, you you you've seen this. I mean, and look out. This is this is going to be the way of the world. I believe in 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 college football, especially for some of these big-time players. H- have you seen this this story with UNLV quarterback? Uh, yes. Jaden, uh, is it Maeva? Yeah, was he going to... Uh, so he, he, he's going to Georgia. So Georgia gets a, a late flip from yeah. uh, Rayola, Dylan Rayola. I mean, Georgia moves this kid to Georgia, Georgia. from Arizona. Yeah. And he was somewhere else before that. He'd he went to high, four different high schools, high schools in four, four years. years. Yeah. Dylan Rayola did. So, yeah. I mean, if you're in Nebraska, you can't be feeling too conf- you yeah. know, too well, firm. I mean, this guy's going to stick it out. But you win. You're, you're one of college. Yeah. It Matt looks Rule. like he's going to Nebraska with Matt Rule. State of the Union address. He's got to pay a million dollars for a quarterback. I think his dad went to uh, Nebraska. Yeah. Right. There were some Nebraska ties, and I think and he's, he's, got on, a, he's got a relative on, yeah, on staff. On staff. Like his right. brother might be on staff. You right. Know? They did the uh, the old... Shea uh, Patterson. Shea, Shea Patterson. Patterson. Yeah. Shea Patterson and Ole Miss. Hire God. his brother. <laughs> that was the Tiger Droppings lore. Oh, my um, goodness. Well, but... How, how many coaches do you need? Just hire him. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, Let him get, give him a job. That, an analyst opening, that, don't we? <laughs> that was one thing that made me like hate high school recruiting. That that that's where it that was the at. tip of the spear. It yeah, that, was. I mean, that's where was... I realized like this is this, this game this, is dirty. Way, you're, right dirty. You're playing dirty. 4G chess over here. You think it's checkers? It's like oh, come to LSU. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's and so look, Louisiana it's kids. Place. It's just getting grimier. But mm-hmm. now the grime is just happening on top of the table. All this stuff used to be happening below the table. Now it's you just can take on. all this cash. Yeah, I mean, we can just cut the deal in the open now. Like I said, Matt Rule was on air saying you got to pay one point five two million dollars for a quarterback. That's about the going rate. Yeah, you blink. Yeah, you blink an eye. He's got Dylan Rayola committed in a week. Uh, so this guy, Jaden Maeva, uh, Maeva, am I saying it right? Uh, it. It's up to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just follow me here. So you just own. Uh, UNLV quarterback uh, has become a, a big commodity in in the transfer portal. He announced that he was transferring to Georgia. Um, he was a redshirt freshman this past season at UNLV in the portal on January second. He was in contact with both Georgia and USC. His dad told ESPN on Monday that his son was transferring to Georgia. However, Maeva will now go to USC after Lincoln Riley made his final pitch. And it wasn't about what, what, what Lincoln Riley said, right? <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't because how Riley told Maeva how they were going to use him that really was the difference maker in, in getting this deal done. This was just a, this was an NIL deal. But I mean. Right. So you, I, I, I understand them taking a, another quarterback, but your quarterback just threw for six touchdowns in a bowl game. Yeah, Miller Moss. Start. Like, how did I mean? I wonder how he feels. Yeah, wasn't it Will Howard that was supposed to commit to USC? Then he walked yeah. out the back door after he saw that. He's like, I don't know if I can compete with that. And then he went to Washington. Well, system, you could say the system, same. You could system, you could say the same thing about Georgia. Yeah. Right. I mean, like, there's no instant playing time available at Georgia. Carson Beck came back. Yeah. Right. I mean, Beck's coming back. Beck could be. One of the front runners of a guy that makes an enormous leap yeah. next year. He was, he was, Heisman. I'm almost positive he finished like first in the league in passing yards. I mean, he was Jaden Daniels. He was. He was pretty good. He like, was he, good. <laughs> oh, late in the year they started to re- like they saw what they had. I mean, he's a former five star quarterback. I mean, he looks weird as all get out. He you know? does. He's got an interesting vibe to him that mm-hmm. I don't know. Very like grunge rock and roll in the '90s. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah uh, rock of the pearl necklace. Not JJ hey, McCarthy. Shells. No. Not meditating. Yeah. That man's punkrock.com. No. Right. But <laughs> Kurt Cobain. Yes, he is all of that. And 
if you want to vibe with him, and if he, but if if you win and if you play well, it don't matter what you yeah. what your vibe is. Like he's a winner, right? But I guess if like so, if you're Mayola and you look at that, okay, I'm not going to play immediately. That's where like quarterbacks now are looking for instant playing time. Like you even heard it from Bryce Underwood in an interview where he said, "I want to come in and start as a freshman." That doesn't happen anymore because of the transfer portal and. The COVID year, I have no idea how much longer this passes on. Where it's I think, like, I think it, it, is it over? The COVID year has to be over. I mean, by it, next I mean, year, it's gotta be. COVID right? was four years ago, Coach. That was twenty twenty. Like I we're in twenty twenty four now. If you had a COVID year, be. Andre Sam was coming back, so it might be over. <laughs> you got seven year quarterbacks out there. You got a couple of seven year quarterbacks. You got a couple out eight there. years. Really? Like, there's like a couple eight year wow, guys what in, a in college. Was it uh, Oklahoma State's quarterback? Oklahoma State's quarterback is like an eight, eight year. years. Running like, it back, Coach Van Wilder. That's yeah. like Van Wilder Senior. Yeah, <laughs> like, bro, you're still here. You guys, I mean, like, I damn, got my masters, bro. my doctorates, my like, kids here. I'm gonna go study abroad. <laughs> Transfer to well. BYU. <laughs> go circumcise some T- kids. Take my mission trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's look, man. That this deal, it's nothing but a bidding war. Yeah, a bunch mean, of mercenaries like, in college. I thought you were going to Georgia on Monday. I was. Yeah. USC came into the condo and a couple of million more. Deal yeah. or no deal. Pick up the phone. <laughs> I saw the way Caleb Williams was living in USC. Oh, that's why he wanted to come back. Yeah. Man's in a penthouse in Los Angeles. Yeah, he's, he's about to be in a... Who was the big defensive tackle from a Georgia? box in Foxborough. Bear, uh, uh, Bear... Is it Bear Alexander? Bear Alexander? I mean, yeah. they, they put him up in some sky-rise downtown L.A. Did he make a tackle this year? Down. Yeah. Yeah. Did he make a play no, he this year? Was he? Like, he was... I mean, on a bad defense. Yeah, on a horrible defense, he was their bright spot. But it, to bring it back to the Mason Smith thing, like, there's a couple variables, right? One, if he comes back and gets hurt again... No doubt. You have no draft capital. No doubt. And scheme fit. If... Blake Baker comes in and wants to run the 3-4 like he did. He was very multiple when he came into LSU. And I know he wasn't the defensive coordinator, but you saw him and Durante Jones toward the end of the year. You could circle the Alabama game where they kind of let the hounds loose, where it was, oh, shit, we've never seen this defense at all, all year. And then they go to Alabama, and it's blitz all night. Blitz, Bama, blitz. Yeah, and (laughs) and Bama was Bryce Young was on his heels. I mean, he was – that that made – He thought he was going to walk He got hit more that night. Maybe then he has it gets has a panther. No, no, <laughs> not that much, <laughs> coach. Whew. I mean, but it's about as much as any. I mean, he got banged up in that national championship yeah. game versus Georgia. And Texas what, beat him up a little bit. That's in where you saw it, Texas. But I mean, LSU that beat LSU twenty one game. He was not expecting. That. They were speaking of flying <laughs> at him, shirt yeah. untucked, Ogeron. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wildest game ever. On the numbers. <laughs> Like beating his chest at Saban. He was wearing pads or anything. Fake punts. Yeah. (laughs) I've never seen anything like that. It was awesome. Going forward on fourth down. Running out the tunnel. Man was playing in a pad and a helmet. (laughs) Coaching in a pad and helmet. (laughs) But that's that's the thing, like if you're Mason Smith and they go back to a three four, where do I sit? Like he don't want to play nose. That doesn't do a good point. He can play Dan. uh, But does he want to? Yeah, he'd probably have to play the nose just because of Size. size, like yeah. you're bringing in what? Or they could put Jacoby and Guillory at the nose and just put it. Washington, in. yeah, shown, shown, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. So like, Sean's obviously more there's stuffer than yeah, would be, I think. But he's so big that it would yeah. be easy to shift him into nose, or at least he would get snaps there. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure injury history with the knee and ankle, like I don't know if I want to be in the trenches like that. And you can't really line him up outside on the as a three technique or or inside as a three technique every play. And be like, all right, go be in the the thick of it with your injury history. You get rolled up. Boom, where's my draft? Yeah, where's my draft capital now? So I understand it from that perspective, but surely from improving your draft stock, <sighs> you're putting your faith in a lot of in a lot of Blake Baker. For how are you going to use me? And I don't know if they've even had that conversation. I, I would imagine he was his first phone call. Like a player like that would be high on the whiteboard of who am I talking to and yeah. who am I trying to who get? Who do back. I need back? Right, and you still. And this is the other part of LSU kind of moving so slowly as, like, the turnstile goes of you have to get a defensive line coach, and at some point to be able to – you talk about retention. Who's who's doing the retending? Right. Who's he talking to? Like, that's when you start getting agents in your ear. You're not getting talked to by the LSU staff of how you're going to be used and what's going to be best for you in terms of whether it be an NIL deal or how – Scheme fit, and how are you going to make me improve my draft stock, or do I just go to the league and take my chances? 
No, I agree. I mean, there, there are some elements here that from the other side of the table that you have to look at and say, well, what is Mason Smith, you know, what, what, what information is, is he evaluating? Is he taking in? And I got to imagine that him and Blake Baker have had some conversations, some extended conversations on how and, 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 and how they would use him. Um, but in, in the same sense, you know, I mean, Mason Smith's got to be looking around like, hey, man, I, I, you're asking me to come back here for a fourth year. And this would potentially be a fourth defensive line coach that, that I would be playing for. And at this point, as I'm trying to make this decision, I don't know who it's going to be. You know, I mean, like, and I'm sure they have shared with Smith that, you know, the candidates and who they are talking to and who may even be leading and who may even be hired at this point. You know, things that we don't maybe even know and, and have the information to. I'm sure that Mason Smith has all the information um, that that LSU is is willing to to give and and has at this point. I mean, it's it's clear that they don't have somebody in place that they publicly want to announce. So maybe that does play into Smith just saying, "Hey, look, uh, this has been, you know, maybe not what what he expected it to be." And on the way out, it's you know, it's still kind of. Shaky. discombobulated i mean it's still not not as not as organized as it needs to be yet which you know i mean there's there's still a staff that has to be filled out there's a lot that goes into it which you know kind of brings us to the 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 other point of of what's going on with lsu and that's the coaching search and, and we'll update you now uh on, on kind of what we've been hearing and where that is remember daily we're brought to you by our friends over at go roof g-e-a-u-x roof.com you can get in touch with go roof just by logging online or you can dial them up at 225-927-8300, 225-927-8300, a beautiful roof every single time. Roof's up with our friends over at Go Roof. You get a two-year free workmanship guarantee with all new roof installations, competitive pricing, free quotes, free roof inspections. You can count on our friends over at Go Roof, whether it's residential roofing, commercial roofing, or roofing repairs. Get in touch with our friends over at Go Roof. Over 15 years of experience, licensed and insured, proudly been around here in South Louisiana since 2005. So they have the experience. You can look them up. For any of our new viewers, uh, if you're over in the New Orleans area and you're looking for a trusted roofer, Go Roof works in that area as well. You can dial them up. Don't be scared of the area code. 225-927-8300. 225-927-8300 and online at geauxroof.com. Uh, I take this from uh, our uh, our friends over at uh, the Bengal Tigers, Shay Dixon, uh, who uh, has a great write-up uh, on the latest of what's happening uh, with some of the LSU coaching searches. And we told you about the name Kevin Peoples earlier this week, or at least we tried to. Uh, and uh, Kevin Peoples uh, is the Missouri assistant right now uh, who seems to be uh, leading the pack as the defensive line coach going into this search. Uh, we've heard other names, and we talked other names. Of course, Bo Davis's name was up and relevant last week. It seems as if over the weekend, things just ran out of gas between LSU and Davis, and it stalled out. And the name that immediately popped up uh, was was Kevin Peoples. Uh, Peoples is a name to watch. He's been up at Missouri. Uh, he is a guy that that comes from the the, the Pete Jenkins line of defensive line coaches. He's also spent some time uh, at Notre Dame. Excuse me, at Tulane. Uh, so he's got uh, the, the the Louisiana experience. He was on uh, Tulane staff from 16 to 19 um, as as the defensive line coach. Uh, he's been at other stops, uh, including uh, Missouri. He was at Northwestern State uh, way back in 2001. So uh, he's got some experience in Louisiana and has been coaching alongside Blake Baker for the last uh, two seasons and uh, is a name uh, to look out for as the the guy that that seems to be the front runner right now uh, for the defensive line coach Kevin Peoples, um, and in the latest with Corey Raymond, uh, you know Raymond is a guy in in that has shown and I think is is uh, interested in, in coming back to LSU. There's a familiarity on the staff with guys like Blake Baker, who we mentioned was on staff in 2021, Frank Wilson. Uh, who Corey Raymond has been on staffs at LSU with uh, during his time that they were in Baton Rouge together. And, and one also uh, key element here is is the relationship that 
uh, Corey Raymond shares with Scott Woodward, uh, and and Woodward is is, is very much involved in, in not only the the negotiation of of these contracts and obviously getting the pen to paper and getting these deal done, but but I think he's 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 very much more involved in the recruitment of this than than we may be uh, giving credence to, and and I think Woodward obviously loves this part of 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 college football. We, we have talked to him before, and there's been interviews with him out there. I mean, he'll just sit in the recruiting room uh, for days on end at LSU football, just listening to strategy, looking at the board, talking players. I mean, he looks and, and loves this, this part of the process and, and really knows what good recruiters look like. He, he knows the value and understanding of what recruiters mean to a, a football staff. And, and I think that, that Woodward – um, you know, has a little bit more say so in in these negotiations and in these 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 chats and conversations, um, then then we may be we we may be giving credit for. Um, and, and Raymond and Woodward have a fantastic working relationship from their days um, at LSU early on, um, and, and someone that look Raymond is a former LSU player. He's always been around the program. He's always been involved with the program. He's always been passionate about the program. And, you know, Scott Woodward is a Baton Rouge native who graduated from LSU, who spent time working in LSU's athletic department early on in his professional career. And, you know, all of that was really driven by his love for the university and the love for the program. So, you know, I think there's, there's a lot of common ground uh, that, that Raymond and Woodward share in, in their relationship and talking some of these things out. So, um I believe that, um, you know, Raymond is the guy for 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 some people um, in in LSU's program right now, and I think some people are are being sold on Raymond that may not have known him during his time here, uh, and and I believe that there's there's possibly other candidates out there that are um, that are being talked to in, in this moment too. So, you know, I, I think they're just right, right now they're in the heat of negotiation. You know, I mean they're they're in the they're in the, the, the churns of, of trying to get the deal done. Um, and Raymond's name has surely been popular in the defensive backfield as far as coming back to LSU. And uh, there were moments in this process where uh, I know at least talking to some people, I felt comfortable and confident that it was only a matter of time before the deal was inked. And then you talk to some people that say, it's close, but it's not done. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I think that there is a, there's a push for Raymond back on staff, I don't think that ultimately it's been it's been confirmed and and, and done and, and gotten the deal done. So, well, what what LSU has done is played with fire a little bit because Corey Raymond is back in Baton Rouge. He's living at his Baton Rouge home that he has held since he left, and I don't think he ever wanted to leave. But it came to kind of a little bit of a I don't I don't want to call it a pissing match, <laughs> but something in that regard of he's always been. Was he like job title hunting a little bit when he left LSU? Like I would say previous to Brian Kelly ousting or letting him walk, it felt like he was always kind of fishing for a higher title, higher pay, and he was flirting with different jobs. But now that you have him back in Baton Rouge, he doesn't have a job after he was let go by Florida. But now you let Black Black Friday, Black Monday come and go, and I would imagine he garnered some NFL interest just from his status and relationship with players that – he could go to an NFL staff. Now you give Raymond leverage for whenever he didn't have it early on. And I don't know if that's a play from his part to wait and see to be able to kind of leverage his position or LSU kind of sat on its hands a little bit and didn't get, offer him a deal in time to where if it was the college ranks, it felt like LSU or nobody. And now that you have the NFL in play, now there's a spot where he could possibly land of 32 more teams. Well, look, and I think – during the, the the process of Brian Kelly coming back or coming to LSU, he he was tasked and and responsible for Cleaning really up. turning over the the program, right? I mean, we, we've just seen this 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 Sharon Lewis trial wrap up, and She's got a pay LSU miles. was was victorious in in the trial, and turns out there was um, you know less Miles countersued Sharon Lewis, and and ultimately Miles won that. Uh, that suit and and you know Lewis is is you know from a uh, from a judgment standpoint has to pay less miles I believe two hundred thousand dollars but but in that in that trial one of the things that came out 
was that you know like there there was a lot of kind of like early on was you know was Scott Woodward saying Brian Kelly fired Sharon Lewis or was Brian Kelly saying that Scott Woodward ultimately it was Brian Kelly that that came in and just kind of look he cleaned house I mean I always say is if, if anybody's an old entourage fan entourage. uh Ari buys the agency, the big agency oh, with that, the, that with he used to work on. for. <laughs> that he used to work for. <laughs> and he walks in on a Friday <laughs> afternoon and just starts lighting people up. He just starts firing everybody. And, uh, you know, I mean, like, that wasn't the scene. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, but I mean, it could have been. CC Fly. You know, I mean, it, it was. It, it was kind of something like that. Everybody's out. You know, I mean, I don't think that. It, hey, well, you, you well, work here? hey, he he played here. I, he's out. Sorry. Did, you know, like well, he's responsible for DBU. He's out. I mean, like that guy recruited Harold Perkins. He's out. Like you, you don't want to talk to these guys at least first. I, I think the the marching orders were clear, right? When Kelly got to LSU, it was like, hey, look, it, it's a clean wipeout. You know, like it's a back to square one. There's some things that need to be. To, to, to be smoked out, cleared out, and you just got to start over. And James Cameron's directing Aquaman? That's awesome. Right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's awesome? Right. Clear your shit out. <laughs> Kelly is... Ari just fired me. My life's over. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, Kelly was responsible for that. And I think looking back on it, you know, I think that he, he would have liked to have maybe had a couple of conversations with people before they left. But that wasn't, that wasn't the, the job at the time. Right. And and I think there was some some mending of the the relationship, not mending, but but, you know, the introduction part of it, the the presentation part of it from Kelly to Raymond that that had to that had to happen because ultimately it didn't happen two years ago. The way it went down was was not eh, what was comfortable for everybody. Right. But, you know, one person. One side had a job to do. The other loved the university and loved the job and wanted to, you know, really kind of fight to stay around. And, and it just couldn't it just couldn't work out then. And I think now with a guy like Baker and possibly Raymond coming back to their their, you know, their old their old building in, in different capacities, but, you know, still around the program. I think that, you know, Brian Kelly has, has <clears throat> has admitted that, you know, it's like, look, if you could have that time back and you know what you know now, sure, you'd like to keep some guys in place, but that just wasn't the, that wasn't the responsibility at the time. I mean, the job at the time was to, to, to clear LSU football out, was, was to start it over, was to shake it out. And, um, you know, that, that ultimately I think had to, had to happen between, you know, maybe even Baker and Kelly, but, you know, between Raymond and, and Kelly specifically, I think, you know, that, that time has to happen of, look, understand when, you know, we got here in, in, in 21, we were tasked with turning the program over. And if, you know, there was a, a, an opportunity to get in and know someone and, and, and build the staff, you, you might have gone in a different direction. But now you got a chance to clean that up and bring somebody back who, you know, really is effective in a role at, at LSU and proven in that, right? Both in recruiting and I think, you know, from the on the field uh, teaching standpoint, you got a guy like Blake Baker who's got some background in secondary work who, you know, can work alongside with Corey Raymond that I think is very, you know, a, a possibility that, you know, LSU looks at as, as, a, as a winning combination. I think, you know, we, we talk about the offensive staff so much and the offensive staff is, is such a great example and, and mile marker to look at as far as, you know, the, the roles and responsibilities of what a college football staff is tasked to do, the offensive staff is elite at, at, at what they do, both in the, 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 in the living room recruiting and, and on the field development and coaching, right? I mean, there, there is a combination of, of work between the staff on the offensive side that they check a lot of the boxes that head coaches are looking for. I mean, you can put Cortez Hankton, Brad Davis, Joe Sloan, Frank Wilson. You can put those guys out on the road by themselves. You can put them on a practice field coaching, you know, your, your players. You can put them on a, a practice field coaching, uh, coaching clinics, coaching camps. And I mean, those guys are going to shine defensively. LSU hasn't had that the past two years. They get that in a guy like Blake, you know, Baker. And I think the remaining parts of the staff are looking for elements like that. You know, for for guys that can. 
check those boxes. <clears throat> and for all the people, for the Corey Raymond perspective, what is the, the what's the narrative that you're getting the negative narrative spin around him that he can't recruit or that he's fallen off and all of this? Like people are saying in the chat that well, Wardell Mack left Florida because because that's why Corey Raymond was fired. I think it was the other way around. Yeah, uh, like Raymond didn't have a place to go, so he was his main recruiter. So Wardell Mack looked elsewhere. And, and and for what he did at LSU, I don't. That place was broken, right? Yeah. After 2019, yeah. it all – you can only do so much as a defensive backs coach to – what do you – he's not the head coach. What You're trying to – he can't make – you gave him chicken shit. What do, you, what do you want him to make? Like, there's not a way to spin it in where it's Corey Raymond's fault and, to, and totalitarity. Like, that's just not how it works. Like, I just don't understand the narrative that Corey Raymond is, lacks motivation – isn't what he used to be like all of these things because you're pointing to a resume in which he wasn't given a hand that he could play you got two seven offsuit and you're playing texas hold'em like what do you want me to do have you ever seen Corey raymond at the end of a football game what he looks like after he coaches i mean his shirt is untucked he's the most relaxed his man hat of all time. is like sideways well jacques has I mean, the video he, he the whole game this guy is jumping screaming coaching i mean like for for anybody to argue that his passion is gone, I don't I don't think that you un, like what do, what are you looking? At? I mean, this guy is he's in it, he he loves it. He un, I mean he's 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 a part of it. You know, coaching is it's it's a cyclical deal, man. Of of the you know you got you got ups and downs on it. Whether I mean it's it's it's. What are we debating? Whether or not he's like forgotten how to coach? I mean, well, like, recruit and Wardell Mac football you know? signing day. What's that? Somebody in the chat said Wardell Mack left before Corey Raymond was fired. Wardell Mack flipped on signing day after Corey Raymond was fired. Like that, he was his main recruiter. Do you not think if Corey Raymond stays at Florida, Wardell Mack doesn't? And it could be an NIL play if you want to go that way. LSU couldn't even get him to answer the phone. Yeah, you don't think Corey Raymond could get him in the building if he was at LSU? Right. Like, what are you talking about? Look at Raymond's history. You can't judge him off the last, if you want to say four years, I'd say the last two years of LSU where – and he still was bringing players in. They all got transferred out and, because he wasn't there. And LSU fans, y'all like Jay Ward last year, right? That was a Corey Raymond recruit. Like, no, I mean, look, <laughs> Raymond geez. Raymond at LSU makes a ton of sense. He, he makes a ton of sense because of his ability to attract players to the program and put them into the NFL. And, and that's the reputation of LSU from the defensive backfield. That's why people are so just shocked of of what they've seen the, the the past year for 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 certain but you know i mean really the past multiple years so it, it's um you know I, I, it, we'll see you know i mean by no deal by by no means is a deal done i'm just giving you the latest on on what um you know we're being told and and again um shay and the crew are, are writing about this stuff over at bengal tiger it's a great time to get uh a a, spot, a, a subscription if you have not done so get over to Bengal Tiger and check them out at on three uh, as uh, they have the, the latest on the coaching search as well um, it, it it'll also be interesting to see what LSU does on the offensive side because you know I, I think as we said look you want to keep Cortez Hankton and Joe Sloan in place and as happy and 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 motivated as possible and whatever that may be you want to just keep, make sure and keep the staff intact keep the staff intact you know, as it is built and, and, and as it is put together, right? And, you know, because of just how good they are. Um, so with that, if you were to just keep them in place right now, you'll have the ability to bring somebody else in. And and, and one of the names that, that keeps popping up um, is, is Slade Nagel. And right now he is the tight ends coach at Tulane. Uh, he is obviously somebody who is, uh, he's from Louisiana. Uh, he played in Louisiana. Uh, he's coached a ton in Louisiana. He's been at stops like Northwestern and McNeese. Um, he's also had stops at Central Arkansas and Dodge City, but very familiar uh, with, with with the state of Louisiana. Um, his dad is a, is a legendary coach, uh, high school coach from, from around the area. Um, so Slade Nagel is a name that we've we've heard. Uh, Russ Calloway is also a name that that's been thrown around. Calloway is a guy who spent some time uh, at LSU. Uh, he he's on Florida staff right now. 
Um, he coached the tight ends at Florida this past season uh, and has been a offensive analyst on LSU staff uh, on the 2020 team. Uh, he then took a job with the New York Giants from LSU, and then he returned to the SEC with Napier staff uh, down in Florida. But Callaway is a guy uh, who I know within coaching circles is very well respected uh, and, and was a part of some of some uh, some big time recruiting conversations uh, that uh, th- that that happened during his time while he was in Baton Rouge. Uh, another staffer to to maybe keep an eye on and a name that that I have heard being kicked around and. Just heads up here. This is, you know, by by no means um, a, a deal that is done, but but something that I've heard from multiple people is that. Um, remember Austin Thomas, Austin Thomas, who was the general manager with LSU football, and a guy uh, who who was around here during some some pretty special days of recruiting, um, and, and is now on the Ole Miss staff, serving in the same capacity. And you see the success that Ole Miss is having, both in the portal and in recruiting. Um, that that it might have a spot. LSU uh, might be clearing a spot for for Thomas to rejoin the staff in, in some capacity as well, um, or or at least making a run at at him to see if he could return. The emphasis this off season, uh, without question is being placed on personnel and recruiting and personnel management. Uh, you, you can see that. And I know that it, it's easy to poke fun at Brian Kelly after his comments now of, of you know, his, his big point of emphasis going into the offseason was player retention and specifically around the defensive line. And, you know, just a week and a half later, you've got, McK- you know, you got Makai Wingo and, and Mason Smith both out the door. Um, you know, I think th- these, are, these are the latest and just lessons that has been learned over the, the, the first two years on the job of the importance of roster management, roster building, player retention, uh, player recruiting, uh, player personnel direction, right? And, and all of those guys in which we have, we've talked about have an emphasis, have a, a, a piece of their skill set placed on, on, on those portions of the game. Right, whether it be personnel management, whether it be recruiting, whether it be retention, NIL management, all, all of what goes into today's you know college football roster management, you know those guys have experience in. So you know you can see the emphasis and some of the direction that Brian Kelly and LSU football are pointing towards here early in the off season is get a staff that's put together that that understands being able to keep players around and get players to campus. Uh, so it'll, it, it'll be, it'll be interesting to, to see how the, the, the next couple of days, uh, and the next couple of weeks play out. Like we said, I mean, Brian Kelly kind of operates on his own timeline. Um, I, I would have thought a lot of these deals would have been done earlier, but look, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't make them wrong that they're not. And, and Kelly kind of works on a timeline that he's comfortable with and, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of wait and see, um, so we'll we'll, we'll kind of stay on top of that as the next day, a couple of days go by. Uh, remember daily, we're brought to you by Katie's Restaurant. Katie's is located down in New Orleans on Iberville Street. Check them out on Iberville Street. You can find them Katie's in Midcity dot com. Katie's in Midcity dot com is where you can find them online. Some New Orleans favorites, cold beer, great service. Uh, they got a brunch menu. It's carnival season down in New Orleans. So if you're ready to start celebrating, remember over at Katie's, they're celebrating uh, the Mardi Gras as well. So stop in and see them. Katie's in MidCity.com. Katie's in MidCity.com. And don't forget about their sister restaurant, Francesca's, uh, which is uh, a, a sandwich deli over in Lakeview uh, that you can learn information on online as well. Uh, Katie's in MidCity.com. We got Jacques coming through in the second hour. Uh, he'll be through here, and we'll talk uh, about the latest with LSU. Uh, how about the men's basketball team last night winning their fourth straight? Uh, LSU hoops uh, beats Vanderbilt last night as Jordan Wright and the crew 77-69 winners over Vanderbilt. Tigers now 2-0 and in SEC play and 10-5 and on the uh, on the season. Jalen Cook finished with a season-high 28, just too short of his career high. He was balling uh, last he night. He was on fire last night. Uh, Jordan Wright at 15, and freshman Mikey Williams, who was the freshman of the league, uh, freshman of the week in the SEC in his first week in SEC action. He had a career high last night, 10 points, and also had eight rebounds as the Tigers win 
69 over the uh, over the Vanderbilt Commodores. Uh, so nice win for Matt McMahon and the crew as they moved to two and zero on the Get season. Get that auto bid, uh, early uh, early on here in SEC play. Hour two of the show. Come back with us here on New Orleans Football's YouTube channel. Did I see somebody West Shin asking about the Colada Show YouTube channel? Yes. Uh, it is not dead. It is still up and operating. We take a lot of the show's highlights uh, from the day. Post them. Uh, there we'll still have some some uh, content that runs on the Colada show, but the seven to nine element of the show uh, runs right here on New Orleans Football. So thanks for finding us. If you have uh, uh, other people out there that are asking questions, uh, make sure and uh, tell them this is where to find us between seven and nine a.m. We appreciate everybody for stopping by and uh, and finding us here. We'll be back hour two next. Jacques will be through here at some point. Make sure and like, <laughs> share, comment, subscribe. Hour two of the show next. Colada show. Do you want to stop football? Do them both. Two down. Oops. Hey, Tino. Cut my headphones up, bro. Yeah. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Journey Collada Show is brought to you by A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A-Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A-Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A-Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at GoMart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. GoMart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make nope. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. For a hole in your roof, for a hole in your roof. Go roof. Roof, roof. Go roof. Hey, Greg. Roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from, I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work with the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow, and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay 
of making that happen. If you want to have first class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682. Fourier Agency. I'm getting deposits, evil in the way, now I'm just driving around it, they said I need the soul searching, I already found it, I unlocked my other side, now I'm sounding astounded, drive by and let it ride like a whip in a Tesla, pressure never fades me cause I'm bigger than pressure, I'm on my grind bullshit, can't fit on my schedule, I'ma do what's best with me, you can keep all your lectures, spend the summer stacking bread, might be gone to November, pulling up like Trey Young just to freeze up December, I got niggas on the block like traditional sinners, OGs love me so I hang with traditional Winners. I took a break for a minute, I had to go charge up Had to focus on my business, I'm coming back smarter Hit up DJ, sell them go like I'm dropping the carter Coming back like KD, it's time to go harder Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up Bounce back, can't let you fold up Keep pushing, can't let you slow up they say that life's a marathon, man, shout out to Nip. They start to think you falling off and they starting to flip. Circumstances start to change and they jump in the ship. Only ones that really matter, who's tied to your hip? They tried to push you to the side because they thought you would quit. May bend but never break, your cloth is legit. When you return in rare form, they all gonna be sick. You ever seen a living legend, just know that I'm me. Slow grind like IT, just know that I'm me. Now I'm back up in my bag, I'm giving them fits. Bounce a bat like John Morant, you know that I'm lit. Making plays like Jack Bash, I'm never gonna sit. Had to be patient, so I waited for the situation. Now that I'm focused, I'ma take it with no hesitation. The hard times that I hated gave me inspiration. Look in the eyes from my kids, gave me motivation. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Bounce back, can't let you fold up. Keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Here, hour two of the Jordy Collada Show, live here from Click Here Digital. Been telling you about Click Here for a while now. We're part of the team, love being a part of the team. Running business development over here and can help you out. Automotive, if you're in the auto industry, you own dealerships, you're a general manager or a uh, business sales director over at auto dealerships and you're curious how you can move more units going into 2024 click here digital has a ton of experience 
a ton of history in the game and a proven product that works. Let us help. ClickHereDigital.com. Uh, you can email me directly, Jordy at ClickHereDigital.com. It's not just the automotive space, though. Uh, we've got great, uh, we've got a great experience in legal, medical, uh, construction. Uh, all spaces for digital marketing. Uh, we can help you with Google ads, social media ads, uh, also have some expertise and some content as well. So uh, give us a ring over here. Uh, look us up online. Click here, digital.com. Once you get to the website, you learn a ton about us. Uh, once you learn about us and you want to contact us directly, just shoot me an email. Jordy at click here, digital.com. Jordy at click here, digital dot com is where you can find us directly. Right, spent a lot of the hour one uh, talking about the decision that Mason Smith had made. Smith, of course, headline news yesterday here in Baton Rouge. Smith announced that he is foregoing the rest of his uh, remaining uh, eligibility at LSU and putting his name into the NFL draft. Obviously, from a personal standpoint, uh, got no reaction to that. Whatever Mason Smith believes is the best for him and his family. Fully support. Go get him. Have a great, successful career. From a football standpoint, we gave our opinion in in the first hour. Really thought uh, that he could have benefited by coming back for a year, both uh, physically getting himself right and financially, uh, whether it be an NIL deal immediately for his senior season and then ultimately move, uh, moving and boosting his draft stock uh, you know, in, into a, a higher round, a higher draft pick, which ultimately could mean more money for Mason Smith. He decides to go pro. We'll wait and see where he goes in April's draft. And, you know, moreover, what's that mean for the LSU defensive line room? And, you know, they got to get bodies. They, they're in a, a, a emergency alert system right now. you got sirens and bells going off, you know, last night and this morning in the room saying you need players now with Mason Smith and Makai Wingo out. I think when Brian Kelly took the podium post game. Uh, following the win versus Wisconsin in the bowl when he said that they feel confident about the retention of their defensive line. I think he had both of those guys in mind when he made that statement. Now, you know, to swing and miss on on Wingo and Smith, uh, you know, going into the offseason, you know, ultimately let's – at least you know you, you, you know what you got to go get. And they need defensive linemen. And they were able to pick up some in, in, in the recruiting cycles, but they'll – you know, they'll really need to scour this second opportunity in the transfer portal uh, when it opens again in April uh, for, for needs on, on, on that front because, uh, you know, right now they, they just need bodies. They, they need people. They need players. They need guys that can step in there and play. A lot like what we talked about with the defensive back room during, you know, portions of the season where, you know, they were just running out of people. <laughs> I mean, they were just running out of bodies. And, and the defensive line – you know, could could be in a similar situation. This spells disaster. What? Like just not having defensive linemen. I mean, I mean, you've seen. You that. look at the rest of the team, and it's all built up, and then you look at the defensive well, line. It's... Look at what Michigan just did. Exactly. How they won a national championship. It's yeah. built in the trenches, and this is a tale as old as time. This look is, at what Georgia did. It's built in the trenches. Look what Alabama's done for years. You can get one side of the ball, and this is, it's not. A comparative to Ed Orgeron, but what he did on the defensive line is what Brian Kelly's doing on the offensive line. To be able to compete at a national level, you have to do both. And people forget you get kind of enamored with the glitz and the glamour of the outside, the Jamar Chases, the Justin Jeffersons. Whenever your playmakers are making plays, it's fun to look at, but where the game is won and lost, I mean, look at Washington. They had everything on the outside. I know they had the Joe Moore (laughs) award-winning offensive line until you put them up against a Michigan defense that, I mean, they had... Uh, who's the guy on McAfee that breaks down the DBs? Uh, uh, Butler. Yeah, Darius, yeah Butler, Darius Butler. That said, they're running a – like he watched the All-22 of the Michigan-Washington game. He was at the game, and he was saying, like, they're running an NFL scheme that is yeah. so complex that if you're a college football player, you don't really know what you're looking and, at. And the, and then oh, he, Blake. Oh, Blake, a peach. Hey, JD. Hey. Wow. But he also said, like, Michigan was running a very simple defense, too. When, like, they were running simple – coverages simple like they were basically going out and saying washington this is what we're doing beat it yeah, yeah. They, and they beat they they ran their no, they base played defense. an sec style old school style oh right, they did base defense and make tackles fly around first guy tackles you wraps you up and then you get there in numbers yeah but he was saying like pre pre snap yeah what they, they were giving them different you looks is, yeah it's insane but what they get to is exactly how you tackled pat mahomes earlier in the year like last year, whenever he started throwing, I mean, he was throwing everything over your head. They went to cover two shell, where all right, you're not going to beat us deep, and that's what if you're playing Michael Penix, that's what you do. Like we're taking away what you're great at. Now beat us underneath, or and he doesn't like to throw to the middle of the field. And they said, 
we'll give you everything underneath. Then that's why they ran so many screens. That's an extension of the run game, which yeah. they couldn't do. And then we'll give you everything over the middle. And he didn't want to throw over the middle because the pressure's it, when it's coming up. You like you saw this even with Drew Brees later in his career when they played the Vikings and they moved to Neil Hunter on the inside, and the Vikings were blowing up the middle of the spot where. He's a shorter guy, so he couldn't really see the middle of the field. And whenever the pressure's in your face like that, you start getting rid of the ball quick. Yeah, well, I mean, and, that makes you panic. And like, if you move Penix off his spot, he, two ACLs later, Coach, he's not moving the way that you need. And that's where the ultimate kryptonite for defenses was Jaden Daniels all year because what are you going to do? Once he breaks the pocket, it's game on. Uh, EWIV says, please look into the transfer portal. Every defensive tackle is committed already. Yeah. I, I mentioned the, the April cycle, yeah. you know, the April transfer portal when it opens again. But I get what he's saying. Like, all of the big names are, yeah. you kind of sat on your hands a little bit. Like I was saying, where there's all of the guys, if you go to on three of the transfer portal for defensive line, everybody's pretty much committed all of the yep. big names. Like, you're not going to get a Walter Nolan. And it's, it's one defensive lineman that's not committed, and that's Will Norman from Florida. We'll take him. Sight unseen. And he's a freshman. Who cares? Take him. Corey Raymond. No, I'm, just, in. I'm just saying, like, you want to get you, – you want to build depth, and you also want to build depth need bodies. that yeah, has, need people. that have ye- multiple years left because you, you need those bodies for right. not only this year but next year and the years coming. All right, uh, Jacques is here. Uh, let's see if we can't uh, walk him Shady. into this uh, – into this, give us a, a, a solo shot here, Stewie, uh, as we get Welcome in here. Into this bus, uh, that's right. Uh, remember, daily. We're brought to you by Hughes Mechanical. Hughes Mechanical AC. Uh, you can find Hughes Mechanical online at HughesMechanical.net. Headquartered in Zachary, uh, they got an office in Covington as well. Uh, they have worked at I-10 corridor for a while, so if you need some help with your AC unit, remember they are a trusted Dykin dealer, Travis Hughes and the crew, 225-658-2147, HughesMechanical.net, Hughes Mechanical Contractors uh, is where you can find them over in Zachary, and as we said, uh, got a spot in New Orleans, uh, an office in Covington, so they can get to New Orleans quick over there uh, if, you, uh, if you need some AC help. Hughes Mechanical Contractors online, HughesMechanical.net. All right, Jock's here. Uh, with us as uh, it's good to have him back uh, in uh, in Baton Rouge as uh, last week when we talked to him. Uh, were you still in Tampa? No, I think uh, I was in here. No, you were here. You were here. That's right. We've, we've had as him in. As I left, Matt House got fired. That's right. <laughs> That's Jeez. exactly right. That's exactly right. It's your video. About five seconds of B-roll. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> um, By the way, I don't want to give away too, you know, too much conversation, but I, have, I was able to communicate with Coach House and – you know, say, look, I'm just out there. I'm out there shooting a celebration. Guys are celebrating a win, and I don't ever want to influence things. I, I, and he Ooh. said, he said, not your fault. So, uh, but it, it's it's interesting. I think your decisions are made right. I mean, he's been your defensive coordinator for 27 games in two years, and countless practices and meetings and whatnot. And I would think decisions made on keeping or not keeping guys should probably be solidified in that body of work. Sure. Not a 10-second interaction on the field after the game. I would imagine the people in the building would probably say, that doesn't surprise me, or that does, or, 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 or that doesn't surprise me. But it, I, I was told by a, a few people that um, that interaction led to questions um, people higher up about um, – Oh, Really? Yeah, in the building. And <laughs> really? oh, you don't say, huh? Breaking. Uh, <laughs> and I want to say something too. You know about the show and whatever. It, it was a surprise that he got fired. Okay, uh, to him. You know, I think he thought he was good, and it, yeah. And, and there's a lot of macho on this. You know, stick my chest out and turn my cap on backwards and come after media guys and whatnot. But I'm t- these things change. They are very fluid. And if you want this guy to fill content for two hours and, and and say, hey, I want some information, tell me what's going on, then you can't come out, you know, and then uh, attack people for telling you what they what they know, what right. they probably know, and filling the two hours on the show every day. So um, I'm telling you that Matt House, when he walked off that field in Tampa, did not think he was getting fired. Mm-hmm. And I heard from numerous people that, yeah, they thought that, X, Y, and Z. Those guys were going. Right. But Matt House was going was gonna to stay. So I think that it was a surprise to him, and I think it was a surprise to – now maybe the two people in charge, the head coach and the AD, maybe they kept that under their hat, so to speak, and knew that they were going to pull that trigger. But I'm just telling you what I am confident in what I've been told 
is that it, it, it was a surprise, and I think a lot of people thought he was staying. Great to see you, buddy. Uh, appreciate <laughs> is that my that. introduction? Yeah, <laughs> appreciate that. The hand of we the king. That you, is, uh, <laughs> thank you very say. much. The, uh, the check has cleared, my friend. <laughs> uh, what do you think about them bringing in Baker? You know, I like Blake a lot. Yeah, uh, good fit. Some of his um, uh, a family member cuts my hair still, and <laughs> nice. I, I drive to see her. Her name is Maddie, and she's up in Zachary. And ah, for two shout years, out for Maddie. she'd be like, I can't believe they let Blake go, you know. <laughs> and I, I hear this for two years, you know, about. And I said, well, how's he doing up there? Oh, well, they like it. You know, it's cold, and but uh-huh. they're getting used to it and everything. And I'd always say, you know, I feel bad. Blake got here. And he, you know, his, the wife got the dream job. You know, she played soccer at LSU, and they were back in Baton Rouge. And because Coach O and everything went off the went off the track, he had to leave. Mm-hmm. But um, I do think that there was some good coaching on that 2021 team. Agreed. I, and I think the, they're seeing that, too, now. <laughs> they're kind of like, man, those guys were under our nose. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think Durante Jones did some really good things. I think that he was kind of uh, handcuffed. Uh, if you hear about the game plan he had going into the UCLA game, and then was told, "Hey, we're not running, ex- we're not doing some of this stuff that we got ready for." And I think Blake, you know, Blake's big takeaway that year was that what he did with uh, Demone Clark and the and the relationship those two guys had, and um, and how Demone, you know, has, has made yeah. it in the NFL and everything. Yeah. So. I uh, did an interview yesterday with uh, Keelan Moses over at U High. Nice. And, uh, you know, he's not going to be here until 2025. But he told me that that was his first college offer was Blake Baker when he was at LSU in 2021. That was the first college offer Keelan Moses got. And so Keelan's very, uh, very smart, very uh, bright young man. And he said is. And said that uh, he can't wait to see what Baker does with – the linebackers with uh, Perk and with uh, with Weeks and some others. The the problem, Jordy, is is there's a position in front of the linebackers yeah, called defensive that's line. Right. <laughs> and that's who's right. gonna? I mean, they need to get some human beings, some bodies, and whatnot. Uh, it, it's kind of you 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 see why they're in the spot they're in, but at the same time, you're like, wow, how can LSU be in such a predicament at that position? It is. It's wild to think that LSU defensively, from a defensive back and defensive line standpoint, in successive years are are desperate. Uh, they were desperate at DB last year. They're going to be since right now. I mean, they they got time. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that they'll start this, but right now, this morning, I mean, they're yeah. I think going into the bowl game, they were like, let's get Makai Wingo and Mason Smith yeah. back, and they whiffed on both. Yeah, I mean, you were and, in the room. I mean, like he's. He said immediately after the game, like their biggest, their, the biggest point of business is is player retention this off season, and that they feel confident that their defensive line. I mean, like that that you know, like you just said it. Things change in this business. Yeah. And that day, he felt like they were, you know, they they were both coming back. Here we are, a week and a half later, they're both gone. Yeah, I don't know, you know, Mason Smith. I don't know if he's one of these guys who came to college and said. I'm going pro after three years, no matter what. Right. No matter what happens, no matter what occurs, I'm going pro. It's like in basketball, the guy gets the ball. I'm going to shoot this time up to four, no matter what the situation or whatever. I'm jacking this thing up. Heat right. check. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so um, somebody and, and, and people online are saying, well, is it really a big loss to lose Mason Smith? Well, they, they're not loaded with Michael Brockers and Glenn Dorsey out there. I mean, they need a guy. Him, you would hope that in the offseason he gets improved, he stops playing so high, he gets in better shape, right. he does some of the things that you hear in the press box with scouts and whatnot. I love Mason Smith. I, I'm not here to pile on the guy. But obviously this was a decision that a lot of people are saying, wait a second, is this the best decision for you to make? He'll get his, his job uh, interview, so to speak, and we'll see if he can make it in the workforce. But right now a lot of people are like, I think he was 14th on the team in tackles. This year, I think he had two and a half quarterback mm-hmm. sacks, four yeah. and a half tackles for loss. Tackles for loss, and, and he got so, one and a half in the bowl game. Yeah, he came on kind of. I don't know if he came on, but yeah, he he played better in the bowl game. He, like you said, he made some plays in that, and so I don't know who's in his ear. I don't know if someone's told him, "Hey, Mason, you're going to get a a higher uh, draft pick than 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 was reality." Right. Um, Corey Raymond's name keeps popping up. You know what I mean? I keep hearing it, whether it's 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 on podcasts, it's on it's at lunch tables, it's people asking about it. I mean, it, did you hear rumors they were going to announce him yesterday? I did. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, and I hear that like the deal's done, and they're just kind of waiting on a on a time to announce it. But then I talk to other people; they say it's it's close, but it's not done. 
Yeah. You know, I mean, um, so, you know, if I'm betting today, if Corey Raymond's on the 2024 edition of college, of LSU staff, I'd say yes. And I'd say 80 20. Yeah. You know, I mean, I think that, that he would be there, but I mean, there still it feels like I, I don't, this is taking longer than I thought it would. Yeah. I, I think I, uh, I heard like maybe on Friday or something like that, that he's, he said something like it's up to them. Uh huh. Right. It's up to them, and so yeah, he, I've heard that he's too. waiting. Like he lives here. Yeah. You know what I mean, he's back here. I mean, his his Twitter handle is hashtag DBU. You know yeah. What I mean, like it's not like he's hiding. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. I mean, it's not like he's like. And I was never comfortable with him going to Florida. I'm like, this is not. I know it's yeah, a it's, it's a, a work pro- profession, and you got to take the jobs. But this guy is from Louisiana. I know he coached in Nebraska for a, a, a time. But this guy played for LSU. He coached for LSU all these years. He does not right. belong wearing orange and blue and in Gainesville. You know, that I is agree. not him. So Coach uh, Jared Mitchell. Like, that's where he's from. You know, like in high school. Yeah. Yeah, from that new Iberia. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Westgate area. You know, all that. So, uh, yeah. And then. D line. I mean, I don't know what's going on there. Did Bo Davis say no? Um, are they trying to go back and get him? Are they trying to offer him more money? I mean, you already got two point five in a defensive coordinator. Well, you got to pay six for the, the 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 former staff. I heard that that was not a pleasant conversation either. That you got to buy out. And they're like, well, didn't you? Didn't we just renew this guy? In that house at the? Didn't we just extend his contract? You want how much money? So. Uh, so that's interesting. Well, too. At, at some point, I, I do believe. Look, I'm a. You will not find a bigger Scott Woodward fan. I mean, look, look over my shoulder. <laughs> I mean, Woody, right there. Oh, Jordan, I appreciate the picture, man. That's great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, when he saw, it, he was like, "Somebody mailed this to mm-hmm. you." Like he couldn't get over. Like somebody like made that. Hell yeah, I'll sign it. Um, <laughs> but at some point, like the accountability does have to find like fall on the people that do sign these like offer these contracts i mean like i I love woodward how in the hell do you give ogeron that contract like i I love woodward how the hell do you 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 leave these guys where no one's had a bigger treasure chest to work with in the history of lsu athletics right a bigger bigger checkbook to cut huge checks i mean i remember when pokey chapman when she got bumped up to like four hundred thousand a year and skip bourbon was not happy with that you know we're Ooh, we're doing what? <laughs> you know, and now your coach is making two and a half. Right. You know, and your baseball coach is at, was he one and a half now or two? He or, just got bumped. He just got bumped, uh, yeah. naturally. So sure. there's a lot of money invested out there into a lot of different people. So, uh, yeah, the, the Joe Dean days of go seven and four and make the Independence Bowl. Right. and Penny pinch. P- penny pinch, yeah. I mean, can you believe still that the story and – you know, I'm not speaking ill of the dead, but... Uh, but that, yeah, I mean, it's just a way of the time, too. Yeah. I, I still think I could have got Nick Saban for 200000 less. You know, after winning <laughs> right. the national title and <laughs> right. all that. Right, Still thinking, you know, still trying to pinch pennies and everything. But yeah, it's a different, huge checks and right. big salaries. I mean, the and, windfall that Saban brought, they're talking about 200000 You know what I mean? Like, just... But that's, that's, that, was, that was the way of the world. Then you know, I mean, that was that was how no TAF L- that was how uh, LSU was run. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, uh, the the tradition fund on the tickets. That's right. They didn't do that until well, two thousand two. I mean, you had to get a guy like Skip Bertman to be like, "Hey, look, I, I know you all love me here, <laughs> you know, and I, right? I need I need you to I need you to commit, you know, like, <laughs> right? I mean, like they were like, who are we gonna get to to ask for this? I think I think Skip's line was. I fell on the spear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I'm the one, okay? That's and, right. But I didn't get the rings, bloody. <laughs> you know, like, don't forget. Don't forget. They got five of them. I remember <laughs> when they did the national championship, the first celebration in 2003 in Tiger Stadium. Cold, uh, cold day. It was cold G- rainy. Yeah. Kip Holden was our mayor. He got oh, up and yeah, yeah. spoke. And they introduced Skip Bertman. And, and, and the, the round of applause was not what it was when he was doing this and holding up the, right, right. the national championship. Because he was, you know, having to that's raise right. ticket prices and everything. That's so right. I remember when, they, when, when he left, he, he was just like, look, the next AD, he's not going to have to do anything. I did it. Uh, what about Matt McMahon? So, yeah, he man. Going, man. Hey. I, I, we, a lot of us uh, have made some snarky comments about how many 
games. I mean, it's definitely been an office pool. How many SEC games they're going to win? One, two, you know. They're off to a 2-0 and start. Um, and, and Saturday in College Station, they were 11.5-point underdog and went in there and really dominated. They beat that team. Beat like, them? That was no fluke. Yeah. Texas A&M, they shot 25% from the field. Yeah. Um, last night, you know, you had a 15-point lead, I think, five times. I think you, you know, in a perfect world, you want to really put your, your foot on their throat and, and win big. But, hey, they got to the finish line and they won the game. So, uh, obviously, we know now Jalen Cook is making a big difference in terms of scoring and distribution and, and whatnot. And I, I think a lot of us, if he wouldn't have been cleared to play, would have been like, oh, yeah, you know, they're saying Jalen Cook's a magic wand and he would have fixed everything. But now we're seeing it. And, um, look, um, they're, they're going to have a tough, tough road to go to Auburn and try to beat Bruce Pearl and company on the road Saturday. But um, I think a lot more people are interested. I, I think still only, from what I understood, there were 2,000 people in the building last night. It's cold. The sun's mm-hmm. going down early. It's 8, 8 o'clock, o'clock, 8 o'clock yeah. tip. So they're going to have to do some more to get more people out. But, uh, you know, people, no one is rooting against LSU men's basketball, right? They just need to see something. And I think – I, th- I would guess that that win at Texas A&M is his biggest win as a coach so far. For sure. Arkansas last year. Sure. Arkansas, yeah. I think Arkansas last year, I mean, everyone got excited and then they went to Kentucky and they played a close game. Went Arkansas down like three starters or something. Yeah. There. Uh, but, yeah, that was a huge win for him. And it, it was a good win on paper. That mm-hmm. win he had against A&M was the, the best Legitimate. win on the floor. Like, I mean, that team was at full power. That place was rocking. I mean, like, he went in there and, like, out-rebounded them, out-shot them. You know what I mean? It was – Yeah. They were dunking on people late in the game. I mean, it was good to see, like, th- this team is different. You know what I mean? The freshmen can play. You know what I mean? It- it's – And the effort's there. Yeah, I mean, it- 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 I agree. I think it- Jordan Rice playing the best basketball of his career. For sure. He didn't score like this at Vanderbilt. No. I mean, so. he-, he-, he played like this at Dunham. Like, this is how he would, like, he would take the floor every night like he was the dude, you know what I mean? It was like, that's yeah. how he feels at LSU. And, and Jalen Cook's done a ton to open that up for him. And then, Jacques, I, I know a story that, that, that you're on, and, and I'm following it too, is the women kind of slowly but surely is still number seven in the country. Like, I think they've been at seven for the last, like, four weeks. But if you're, like, paying attention to them, Flaugé's fine in her game. Cool. I mean, like, Flaugier to me is the, she's the biggest the, jump from freshman she's to She's the sophomore. X factor. Yes. Like, she's, she's the one that really is, like, the mismatch. Like, kind of like, what she's, are you going to do with Flaugier? She's the engine. Michaela Williams. I, I think she's, she's top three basketball players on the campus, period. Like, yeah. she's the best player on that team. Yeah. Uh, it was funny. After the game, after the Ole Miss game Sunday, Mulkey was like, Glad she made that three-pointer on that fast break. <laughs> I mean, you and I both were on basketball, organized basketball yes. teams, to pull up and shoot a three when there's <laughs> – How about the confidence of that? Yeah. Like, and she, like, walked into it. You know what I mean? It wasn't like she, like – she kind of, like, took her time, stepped into that thing, and you were – I mean, like, yeah. Jacques, she's, she's as good as I've seen since Simone. And right? Moki keeps talking about it. She's, she's strong, right? She's yeah. not one of these – waif guards who goes in the lane and gets hit and flies you know i mean she's thick and she's strong and she can rebound and put stuff back up and and to lloyd in your point too um i covered the who they played missouri last mm-hmm. week flage like last year may fall into a rut where sometimes it's hanging out on the wing mm-hmm. i ho- i hoist up three 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 pointers right off the bat i'm over three i'm over four and then i kind of Maybe not f- fall out of it. Her ability to drive now, she's taking the ball to the hoop a lot more, finishing a lot more, fast breaks and everything. And, I mean, she was wonderful the other night against Missouri. Uh, she was terrific in that game. I think she was 11 to 17. And then Anissa Morrow, I just love hearing her talk in post game press conferences. She brings like this maturity and this this veteran leadership. And I think she came in here with a chip on her shoulder where you know people said, oh well, she averaged 25 points a game, but that was at DePaul. Let's see what she can do in the SEC and against the big dogs, and, and she's getting it done. She hit a cold-blooded three-pointer the other night. I mean, like one that just was a dagger to Ole Miss that Ole Miss felt like they were coming back. You know, like they, it felt like they were kind of clawing their way back into the game, and she just stepped into one. I, I think they're finding themselves. Van Lith, I think, is kind of starting to feel comfortable in her role. I mean, it, it wasn't perfect start. 
They're still, I think, a little bit behind the eight ball as far as where they should be because of players that they've lost and injuries. But they've got a core seven that they play yeah. that is as tough to match up as with anybody. And you can feel their confidence coming along. And, um, man, I, Michaela Williams, I, I just – She's so good. I, I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't know that she was as basketball skill advanced yeah. as she. I mean, she's as. I mean, she's the best ball handler I've seen at this since Simone. I mean, like she's got it on a yo-yo. You know, what I mean, she's almost kind of got it on a string. And not going to get full of herself either. She's, right. She, she's going to stay hungry and just. She's so true freshman. I mean, you know, she's she's got three and a half years of her left. You think here at LSU? So. Uh, and it's funny. I wouldn't call Angel Reese a role player by any chance, but by any stretch. But she's just kind of that's uh, right. flying under the radar right. to an extent and doing her job. It, and that's where she is most effective, right? I mean, like you know, my son and I were talking about this today, and we were talking about kind of like the pecking order of players on the team. And it took me to about five to get the Angel, four, to, you know, to get the Angel. And, and and that's not disrespect. I think what Angel does. I mean, she's a walking double double, right? But I mean. You can see she gets a little uncomfortable six or seven feet out from the goal, right? Where yeah. she's got to handle it, or if she's got to, she should kind of think about a shot. If somebody else is open, she'll she'll pass it, which I think is also a testament to she's very unselfish, right? But I mean, is in her being in that specific role where hey, you go rebound and put back, and you'll get you know you'll get yeah. fourteen and ten. That Jaime Ureta throwback. That's right. It's exactly. It's, <laughs> I mean, a, it's a I mean, great. It's a, a shooter. It's a great comparison. I mean, it, Glenn Davis. Glenn was a little bit better of a shooter. He could step out and hit that ten footer. But I mean, a lot of his points came from just Clean rebounding up. and putbacks. Yeah, one of John Brady's favorite memories to recall from their their Final Four run was the three pointer uh, Glenn took against Texas, <laughs> That's right. and he goes. They had a guy named Enberg. I'm like, yeah, Dick Enberg, like one of the most famous. <laughs> They had that guy in Berg. <laughs> he said, "Big baby for three? <laughs> you know, like, like the question mark? You know, and he, he stroked the three for the outside. So it was like, uh, it was like Skip one time. He goes, "We had a guy, Jim Hawthorne. <laughs> yeah, we had a guy. He was the voice of the Tigers yeah, for right. forty years. So, but yeah, I think um, yeah, just rebound and do the dirty yeah, work. Right? I mean, like this is your role. You'll be great at it. You'll be an All American." Um, What's coming up, J.D.? Where, January 25th, South Carolina, Lloyd. That's Circle it. it. Somebody got asked me again, when's that game? Uh, January 25th, Thursday got, night, I, 7 o'clock. I was looking at it the other day. I was, it would be standing room only. Yeah, I, I, that's going to be the game where nobody, where people who do not like women's basketball are going to try to go and, uh, and, and get a ticket. So uh, Every time I look up, it seems like South Carolina is playing one of the best teams in the country yeah. and winning. Yeah. So they have definitely been battle-tested. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, and, and so uh, – and then Gino and, and UConn and, uh, you know, Caitlin Clark is still there at Iowa. So there's going to be some interesting uh, – March Madness is going to be fantastic this it year is. in the women's game. Yes. Um, all right, do, do you cover this recruiting stuff? I mean, do you uh, – Kind I mean, of. You've got so much stuff going on. Uh, right? You know, I try to get out and talk to uh, – like I said, I, I – Yeah, you talk to Keelan. Keelan, huh? and I, I've touched base with uh, Harlan Berry. I think we're going to go to New Orleans and chat with that guy. I hear he's tremendous. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting. I don't know if I've ever seen a class a year in advance already gain this much steam like this 2025 class is getting. I think there's there's eight guys committed at this point. Uh, when I was interviewing Keelan yesterday, I said, you guys are either one or two in all the national rankings. He goes, no, 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 we're number one. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> there's no, no, we're not number two. Uh, so, you know, Bry, uh, Underwood to commit over the weekend and, and so forth. So, I'm not on it as much as, uh, my, you know, the Shea Dixons and Mike Scarbros and um, yeah. Billy Embodies and all those guys that do an amazing job with that stuff and do all those camps and who's coming in and whatnot. I do hear the stories now of how NIL is affecting things where guys will say, Coach, yeah, I'll, I'll come visit this weekend, but I'm going to need 5000 uh -huh. Yeah, it's like 5000 just for, like, unofficial visits. Can you can you imagine? <laughs> Appearance and, fee. And, and look, hey, no commitment. Like we're not, we're not oh, getting no. a commitment out of you. <laughs> like, you're, like, you're taking me to uh, yeah, right to Ruth Chris, Texas Day, Brazil. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean like my hotel. Put the paddle. Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, and and I'm I might not commit, or I I'm already committed to another school, and it's I'll an show up. But yeah, I mean it's it's wild. It's it's a fine line between okay, getting what they deserve and just 
exploiting en- entitlement. it. Entitlement. Exploiting it. You know, I mean, yeah. like it's a, it's a pure exploitation of the. It, it it really and truly is the wild wild west. I don't want to use like when I interviewed Shay, I was like, okay, I don't want to get melodramatic or, and use the word extortion, but is it not? That to an extent, hey, I'm leaving if I don't get X, Y, Z. Well, look what the quarterback at UNLV just did. I mean, like he was committed to Georgia on Monday, which I'm sure Georgia put a deal together for him to commit and saying, like, you come here, I'm going to give you, you know, X amount a year, and then a day later I'm going to USC. Yeah. Well, because he met with Lincoln Riley. Get the hell out of here. It's because Lincoln <laughs> Riley showed up with a, a bigger deal. bag. Right? I mean, like, that's, that's what it's – And how is that not pay per play? And who is keeping up with, okay – What's he doing now? Did I see him on a billboard? Have I seen him in a commercial? Exactly. Have I, what is he doing in exchange for this? I don't understand why this conversation doesn't happen more, J.D., of this is not NIL. <laughs> like name, image, and likeness all spurred of sharing the profits of the, the play, like the, the, the payments for the, the, the product, like the television contracts. The players should get a portion of that. It shouldn't be Gordon having to you know, payroll the entire team to keep them for NIL. That's that's not what NIL is. That's that's why I don't understand why this thing has been allowed to move like this into two years where it's just ballooning, it's just mushrooming into a bigger problem rather than somebody just pop the balloon and say, hold up, this is not NIL. NIL is like you guys have to cut up that TV contract. You know, rather than building another facility or giving this coach another $3 million a year, that's done. Harbaugh, like him, love him, or hate him, I thought earlier this week when he was asked about NIL, he said, like, coaches have to take less. Administrators have to take less. Like, because this is not the purpose of NIL. Like, the whole purpose was for the players to get their cut. Right. To get their, their, their due. How does that not, like, why is it, because it's, it's now in a system where it's pay for play. What's not pay for play? What do you mean it's not pay for play? He's going to USC because they're paying him more than Georgia did. That is pay for play. So why is it not brought up and said, all right, look, this is, we're losing the whole system because we're not even incorporating name, image, and likeness contract. Like they they should get a cut of the TV deal. Yeah. Well, you know, obviously. Tyron Matthews sold a million number seven jerseys. Tommy Hodgson sold a million 13 jerseys. Kevin Falk, a million three jerseys. Never saw a cent of it. Look, Ben Simmons is not the most popular guy in LSU history, but he had. Right. You uh, put 25 on all the jerseys. Yeah. And you sold that, you know, you sold a lot of tickets and you sold a lot of jerseys because of Ben Simmons that one year. So that's. Dylan Cruz. Yes. Yeah. On down the line. Uh, Look, if a guy can do a commercial with a local tractor company like Will Campbell does, I think that's endearing that's funny to see will campbell dressed up like a you know like a hunter and a a good old boy from the country that that all is great stuff but yeah back to what you're saying and and interviewing gordon a couple weeks ago he told me that they don't want to do as much as yeah it's harder you know right i mean you think that's sustainable who cares how much money he has if he's got hundreds of millions in the bank he can't just keep paying every with no return like i mean like i mean like I, I see the fans going after Todd Graves. Hey, he needs to do more. Right. Well, that's not his responsibility. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, he and he's done. It, he's been pretty involved. He's got Jaden and all those guys on billboards around town. Right. He's got 800 locations. All right. Like, what does Brandon Landry do? I'm like, he works all day. I mean, what do you mean? What is he? He should pay for the LSU defense. I'm like, are you kidding? He's got kids. I mean, like, he's got a mortgage. Well, he's a millionaire. Who cares? Like, it's not his it's not his responsibility. I mean, like, it's just that that's not that's not what NIL was, though. Like, it wasn't for every booster to have to show up with their checkbooks open. And honestly, I mean, those businesses, if they're being honest with you, they'll probably tell you, you know, we don't really get a whole lot of exactly. return on this. Exactly. The I ROI mean, is small. Right. <laughs> the walk-ons by LSU is packed no matter what's going Doesn't on. Doesn't matter. You know. Doesn't matter. They could be three and seven, or they could be fifteen and zero, and there's going to be people at walk-ons on campus. Yeah, yeah. And look, I think Gordon has uh, has done a great job and and done all he can do. I mean, he told me you know last year it was seven fifty to a million on fifteen football players. This year it's more like half a million wow. that he did. Uh, and not to mention Mulkey. Uh, he had Michaela Williams when she was in high school. Shelton Sampson when he was in high school. 
I mean, I think he's been involved as much as he can. Now, you know, it's like the it's like the rock star who starts the the million dollar tequila company. Okay, he had the money to begin with, and there's a lot of people who don't. But I, I still think that's a tricky dance when somebody's sitting up in the stands and they've already paid for their tickets. They're parking, uh, you know, twelve dollars for a for a for a for one beer. Tiger or what, dog. <laughs> yeah, I mean. exactly. And you, and they got donate to buy you traditions. You know, it's like <laughs> how much blood do you want out of this turnip? Yeah. Not only that, it's like rich people want they want tax breaks. They want t- returns on investment. They want, if I if I donate to TAF, I can write it off. And I get TAF points in return, right? And I know Bayou Traditions is, is working into that, but it's yeah. still a lot of, hey, can you cut a deal for this guy? Well, sure. I mean, do I get anything for it? And it's like, eh, not really. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it, not, even a, not even a tax break. Forget, like, the perk of, like, going to the game and sitting in his suite or something. I mean, like, you know, like maybe getting my kid a, a signed jersey or something. But there's no tax break off of it. There's no points in return where I get something to build equity into. I mean, it's just, it's a very broken system. It, 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 it's, it's not a, sustainable, like it, you said. Well, that's the difference between nonprofit and for-profit. The, the TAF is a nonprofit, <coughs> 501c3, so that's all non-taxable, right? And it's, whenever you talk about your traditions, that's a for-profit foundation that you don't get any benefit from it because you're actively committing your money to something that is going to pay someone else and that's the that's where the split is that's the der, like derisive line between why taf makes sense and the bio traditions it's hard to reach back into the coffer and go okay Golly. Like, i mean I, you know i mean i, I was talking cool. i was talking to our friends over at the alumni association carvalito and and, yeah. and and lauren giffen you know and i mean it's like they're just a branch on the lsu tree you know, like, I mean, like the LSU, it, like think of LSU as one of these like, you know, noble oak trees on campus. All these branches coming off of it is fundraising arms asking pretty much the same pool of people. You know, what I mean, like once you get to these lists, I mean, there's only <laughs> so many millionaires that have graduated from LSU that are still really kind of like open and willing to donate. And, and, and furthermore, even people that are making like, you know, 200K to a million a year. You know, I mean, it's not just about the, the, the uber rich. I mean, it's it's going after the same pool of people and saying, can we get a donor? You know, can we get money? Can we get, you know, I mean, it's just. Richard Lipsy, it's once again time to talk about the <laughs> JFK right. assassination. <laughs> and while we're here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> we'll build a podcast completely around you. <laughs> can we just get a check for five million? <laughs> it's, yeah. uh, you know, you. You think, back to your, you think back to your innocence, right? You think back to your youth when you used to go to the stadium and, you know, we'd go see Tommy Hudson and Wendell Davis and Tony Moss and Eric Hill and all those guys. And uh, you want it to be – you want those guys to be invested because they love Tiger Stadium, they love the fans, and they, LSU's got a winning tradition and winning history and all that. You don't want it to be about, okay, who's writing the, the biggest check. Yeah. So um, – as how does the clock turn for you now that football is over? By the way, we solved all the problems, right? Yes, yeah, everything's good yeah. now. All right, Colada do set twenty four. <laughs> um, uh, Cajun Italian, I like it. Uh, uh, branch out to a lot of different people. Getting deals done. <laughs> Stewie, you want to be the campaign manager? <laughs> I was, I was going to say, yeah, Lloyd diversity. Yeah. All about diversity. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Keynote speaker over here. Um, <laughs> Lloyd's the director. Stewie, introduce us. Director of communications, yeah. Lloyd. Uh, <laughs> so how does what, what's the schedule look like for you? Football season's over. You, you into base, uh, basketball mode here? Uh, you know what? I think like tonight, for example, there's a great girls high school basketball game in which Jada Richard – yeah. which is the, the daughter of Quincy Richard, who was the quarterback on Southern's 2003 wow. Black National Championship. Or, wow. or not not daughter, sis, younger sister. My bad. Quincy, don't. Uh, he aged him. Uh, yeah, well, Quin, Quincy's married and got kids on everything. But uh, <laughs> I think it's his younger sister. So she's a uh, commitment to LSU. Okay, yeah. And uh, they're playing Southern Lab and Keanu Chaney okay. tonight. Wow. So we're getting out shooting some high school basketball. Last night we went to Brule. Love it. They're 16-0. Hell yeah. Walt LeMoyne uh, Court. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, they, they won last night. And uh, there's a young lady at Estruma 
I saw Sid Edwards tweeting about her. She scored 64 points I the other night. I saw Coach Edwards. Aaron, Aaron Brown, I think. I, I just said her name on the news last night. Now I can't think of it. I, so they played a game last night, and I tried to go out. I, I anchored the six, and I get out there. There was two and a half minutes left to go in the game. and uh, But she was still out there. I got her making one bucket and showed it on the news last night. She only nice. scored 46 last <laughs> night. But she's averaging close to 40 a game uh, Wow, for a Struma. She's a five foot seven sophomore guard. So I haven't seen a, a girls basketball player put up those kind of numbers uh, in, in a while. That's incredible. So I believe that she's on LSU's radar and they're, they're watching her. I don't know if she's, you know, I don't know how she figures into her recruiting realm right now, but she's, 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 she's something. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be, uh, you know, the LSU first pitch banquet's coming up uh, January 21st. I think that's a week from Sunday. Um, I think softball, LSU softball is going to start like in four weeks. And then, uh, and then you're really, you're really getting into the, the. There is no busier time, the beginning of March until mid mid April or so, in terms of all the things that are going on between baseball, basketball, Southern LSU high school, spring football, coaching searches. <laughs> you know all those different things. I love this time of the year. Yeah, um, I don't like the weather right now. I don't like the the sun going down early and no, uh, the reason I was late today is that I have, I have, have a thing called a garage that I should use, but I don't. And, uh, ice on the windshield, you know, no. getting the ice off uh, to get over here. I was a little late today. Sorry yeah, no, that. no, I hate the cold weather, but I, I, I love what you're talking like the, the, the yeah. spring sport time where, you know, the weather starts changing baseball weather. Um, we're not, Raw we're fish. not quite there. February is gray, dreary. Yeah. Um, all right, JD. Great to see you as always. Good love everyone in the chat. Morning. Didn't mean to start off today oh, by attacking anybody. Nah. I'm just, Sticking up from a man and others here. They're trying to tell you what's going no, on. You're the, the best the of their ability. They, 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 you're getting thanked. You're We're bound to have king. a thread on Tiger droppings yeah. today. <laughs> uh, Jacques, the best over at WAFB is the sports director. At Jacques Doucet is where you find him and catch him on the desk over there. Uh, we'll be back. Close it out here on the Jordy Collada Show, live here from Click Here Digital. Keep pushing. Can't let you slow up. Bounce back. Can't let you fold up. Keep pushing. Can't let you slow up. Bounce back. Can't let you fold up. Keep if you're in the market for a mortgage lender, you need to start with Doug Bickley and his team. Bickley has built a crew with over 50 years of combined lending experience. They've been in business for over 20 years and they love helping their clients achieve the American dream of home ownership. They're also key with working in real estate agents and helping their clients getting same day pre-approval. They average about one buyer a day getting them in a home. If you want to get in touch with Doug and his crew, it's easy. Call them 225-214-5154. 225-214-5154. Go see the Bickley team today. They're located on the corner of Corsi Boulevard and Sherwood Forest right here in Baton Rouge. What's up? What's happening? Chilling with a couple of cool guys. You? Chilling and watching some tube. <laughs> Hold on. Did you do it? Hold on. Did you do it? Roof up. Hold on. Roof up. Roof up. Roof up. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. Head health is incredibly important for our student athletes. One of the best ways we're trying to address concussions is on the front end. We're trying to prevent these before they happen. And a big part of that is speaking to the athletes, letting them know what to expect. Okay, speaking to the parents, what to look out for, talking to the coaches so they know the vital importance. Some of the big things we're looking for with the concussion, which is, you know, a traumatic brain injury is one, was there a mechanism? Was there an injury that took place that could lead to this? Often a direct blow to the head, a head-to-head -head hit. If someone's showing signs of concussion, our first step is always to remove them from activity, get them to a place where there's less stimuli, where we can really just sit down and get a feel for the athlete, what they're feeling. We're looking for headache, we're looking for 
dizziness, any sign that coordination is off, that something's just not right, get a good evaluation them to understand what's going on. It's not worth the risk that may be there to kind of ignore it because there are very serious consequences if we don't treat a concussion properly. Don't let concerns about shifts in the market disrupt your long-term financial goals. Edward Jones Financial Advisor Daniel Newman can help. He'll work with you on an investment strategy for long-term results. Edward Jones can give you the tools and knowledge for a steady approach to hitting your financial targets. Get started today by calling Daniel Newman at 225-261-8262, 225-261-8262. Edward Jones, member SIPC. Click Here Digital, the home of the Jordi Collada Show. Online at clickheredigital.com, if you're looking to set Google ads, set social media campaigns, learn about SEO, display video, or even creative, Click Here Digital has the answer for you. Online at clickheredigital.com or email me directly, Jordy at clickheredigital.com. Red Stick Sports, a local staple in Baton Rouge to all sports fans, was founded back in 1981 and has remained a family business for over 40 years. Today, they still have the great selection on the floor, but they're also a leader in custom apparel for businesses, sports teams, and other groups. Take it from us, everybody over here at FM Digital Media. They help us out with all of our apparel. Let them help you out today. Go ask for Cody over at Red Stick Sports. Check him out online at redsticksports.biz. The Jordy Collada Show is brought to you by A Bears Lawn Maintenance. Commercial or residential, A Bears Lawn Maintenance is ready to work. A Bears can tackle all your homeowners association requirements. Call Blake at 225-485-8022. A Bears Lawn Maintenance. In a wreck, Gordon McKernan Injury Attorneys is ready to go to work for you. Come meet your team. I'm your intake specialist. I coordinate your case and connect you with your attorney and paralegal. That's us, your legal team. Thanks. And we'll fight to get you every dollar you deserve. I'm your settlements and disbursement manager, and I'm here to get you paid on time. I'm attorney Gordon McKernan. Put our team to work today. Just call us. Get it done. Hey, Tiger fans, when you're traveling through Natchez, Mississippi, make sure to visit Tom and Wright Granning at Go Mart and On The Go Deli, where you can fill up your tank and your belly. Go Mart has clean restrooms, community coffee, an awesome beer cave, and a great selection of anything you may need on your trip. Located at 4 Sergeant Prentice Drive as you're entering Natchez on the left. Also stop by Wardo's Po' Boys at 309 North Broadway on the beautiful Natchez Bluff, where the Po' Boys are so good you'll swear you're in Cajun country. At Auctioner, we know healing is a team sport. That's why we've partnered with world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. James Andrews, to create the Auctioner Andrews Orthopedics and Sports Medicine Institute. Whether you're a professional athlete or a weekend warrior, our team of specialists are dedicated to getting you back in the game. So whatever your reasons are for reaching your personal best, we've only got one, you. Auctioner Andrews Institute, long live you. All right, buddy. Make yep. it a good shot. Oh, yeah. Sticking the roof in. Hey, Greg. Roof up. Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos up! Roos Beautiful roof every single time. True. True. Well, the Oscars Andrews Sports Medicine Institute collaborative effort uh, was uh, an idea from Dr. Andrews and myself to bring together two great names, the Andrews name and the Oscar name, to elevate the quality of care for athletes in the state of Louisiana, where he's from. I always thought I would come back to Louisiana to 
practice orthopedics with my subspecialty being sports medicine. This was an opportunity through Oshners to come back and work with the entire state to help develop and take sports medicine to a new level. As an orthopedic surgeon, what this means in the future in terms of you know, access for our community, the type of care that Dr. Andrews pioneered, words can't describe how valuable that is. Oshner has a great opportunity here to, to really grow and Dr. Burnham, of course, is the mainstay of making that happen. If you want to have first-class sports medicine care, check in with Dr. Burnham and his group, and you'll be more than impressed and pleased. Fourier Insurance Agency, established in 1946, helping you with your home, auto, commercial, life and health insurance needs, Around in Baton Rouge at 4275 Government Street and online at FourierAgency.com. Whatever insurance you're in the market for, home, auto, commercial, contractors, life and health, get in touch with Fourier Insurance Agency, FourierAgency.com, or give them a call at 225-383-0682, Fourier Agency. Can't let you slow up, bounce back, can't let you fold up, keep pushing, can't let you slow up. Closing it down here, Jordy Collada Show Hour 2. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for uh, all the interaction. Like, share, comment. Jock's segment. Uh, appreciate him sticking around. Mason Smith, the big news today. Uh, and LSU rounding out their coaching search, both offensively and defensively for that staff. Uh, we'll see where the Tigers go here. not rounding out their coaching search? The New Orleans Saints. Ugh. It's uh, Gruden? I, I guess Gruden's going to be a Hail Mary for him. You know what... If what the funniest thing that would happen if they bring Gruden in as a consultant and they keep Pete Carmichael as offensive coordinator, oh, yeah. and they're just like, "Well, Gruden will have his is hands it, in it." But I, I, they could be a mutiny if they do. I'm telling, like, there has to be some type of shakeup. I mean, like it, the Saints, they with the amount of coaches that are out there, sheesh. And you're going to run it back with Dennis Allen, who is comfortable enough to go to a press conference and say, "Oh, I'm getting retained." Like it's not even a conversation. Exactly. It was that was not a question. That was a statement. Right. Declaratory. Um, Lloyd put this inside the chat. There is a uh, former Raiders CEO, Amy Trask, who went in on Dennis Allen on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, she was on the, uh, the Eisen show earlier this week, uh, or it's on the Rich Eisen show YouTube channel. Uh, it's on the, uh, on the, the, the podcast of what the football hosted by Susie and Amy, uh, Su Susie Schuster and Amy Trask. Trask is a former CEO of the Raiders. She worked for both Al and Mark Davis, uh, and she was in the Raiders organization while Dennis Allen was the head coach, and she did not bite her tongue when talking about Allen and really just, you know, explain this is who he is, you know. And for anyone who has, you know, wondered, what, what are the Saints doing with, with Dennis Allen? Allen is a yes man. A Allen is somebody put in place by power that they know will not try and buck the system, Right. Could you imagine if Arthur Smith would have tried and confronted Sean Payton on the 50-yard line? And I'm not trying to make this all about Payton, right? But, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's the mile marker. It's the comparison. And it's obviously what the New Orleans Saints wanted to try and keep in place was the, 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 the Payton regime, the Payton feeling, the Payton um, staff. You know, I mean, the, the place is, it, it still looks like 2016. still feels like 2020, 
right? I mean, like if if you want to get so far away from Peyton, you gotta you gotta clear the whole thing out. If you're gonna try and be like Peyton, this guy ain't it. I mean, you know, I mean, allowing Arthur Smith to to, to confront you in the middle of the field and agreeing with him, you know, apologizing to the Falcons, and you know, I mean, just the 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 mediocrity that is accepted by the Saints with Dennis Allen is going to haunt them. You know, I mean, Allen knows he's being retained because he's been told at the highest level he's got nothing to worry about. He doesn't have anything to worry about because he doesn't buck the system. He doesn't buck the system because he says yes to everything. He says yes to everything because the management doesn't challenge the head coach to go out there and put a winner on the field. And, you know, I mean, that's that's the cycle of the Saints. They're 8-8. Eight and eight. They're back into 7-9, and 8-8 eight and eight territory. Missed the game by a playoffs. Draft 14th. Every single year, which is, you know, middle of the pack in the NFL. And, you know, it's it she, sucks. She called him really rude, demeaning, and derisive whenever he came in and was hired as the Oakland Raiders head coach toward the organization. He was like, this is a loser empire. And she was like, well, what Jameis Winston did was essentially a middle finger to the coaching staff. Absolutely it was. It 100% was, and it's supported by the entire team. Like I'm not here to to debate whether it's right or wrong. But well, Jameis will debate you. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it's not our place. Respectfully, it's not our place as media members to go in there and give our personal opinion to Jameis on what he did. We got to play him two times a year. We played him two times a year. What what you did recognize in Jameis's decision is that he had the backing of the entire team. I mean, you you got guys, you got guys like Cam Jordan on on social media out there talking about the type of teammate and the decision. And supporting Winston. I mean, you know, some of the, the, the biggest leaders in the building. Whether it was right or wrong, it, the team is behind it. And the head coach had zero say-so to what happened on the field. And he's being retained. The Saints are showing their hand. They're almost showing their hand with a smirk on their face. You know, it's like, yeah. That's what we got. That's our guy. <laughs> I mean, like, that's our dude. That's D.A. The players don't respect him. They call their own plays and... It's all good. Behind door number one. Dennis Allen. Womp, 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 womp. Like, you don't get a winner there. Pick me a winner, Bobby. And it's the fact that, like you said, that showing their hand is the best way to put it because ain't no changes coming. Maybe Pete Carmichael had just another way to deflect blame. I, I don't think Carmichael was very good as an offensive coordinator. First of all, he never really wanted the job. He's been in and out of that role. He took over when Sean Payton wasn't the head coach, but I'd imagine Sean Payton had a pretty heavy hand in that game plan, knowing the way Payton is. I don't think he exactly respected the authority of Roger Goodell. I'd imagine he was still somewhat tangible to the process of what the offense was doing. But it's Dennis Allen deflecting blame with the fire of an OCDC. This is how head coaches work. Right. You deflect the blame. Look, we'll get him out, and I get to boot. That wasn't my fault. I, I, don't, I don't know what the, the status of John Gruden is in the NFL. I don't know the feeling around him. Um in the NFL, but if if he's back to a cleared status within you know executives, Dennis Allen may be hiring his replacement if they bring Gruden aboard. I mean, in in, in all honesty, and you know, I mean, I, I don't I don't know what that what that means for for Allen, but they're going to be in some situations where those two are going to be in the front of the room talking football, and it's going to be very clear to the professionals that John Gruden has more knowledge and more discipline in the game than Dennis Allen does. Well, and he'll just be a better, like, the he's going to command the room. Exactly. There's, Dennis Allen will be over there as the number, like... Apologize. Hey, yeah, number two over there. When John Gruden speaks, people listen. Give me a knock if you're with me. Like, right. he knows how to command a room. Dennis Allen is going to be in the shadow of Gruden, even if he's there as just an advisor. He's going to just loom large in that building, and Dennis Allen will be once again in the shadows, where probably where he deserves to be. Like, him at the front of the podium is not great at any point, and example A is him apologizing after a 41-point win where Jameis Winston is literally saying, hey, the team took a vote, what do you want me to do? And he's like, what's the difference between 41 and 48? You know, like, Mm. does it matter? And then you had Atlanta Falcons players that are picking up their own highlights of when he, that guy had a pick six against the Saints. He goes, could I have taken a knee? Absolutely. But did I want to score? Hell yeah. Like, they were already up by 14 with two minutes left, and he could have run the clock out. He knows. He's like, I'm taking it 98 for a touchdown because it's the Saints. 
Like, do you not understand what you're... It's the old, but it's the Saints' oldest rival, and it's a rivalry that the fan base takes very seriously. And the public opinion in the court is 99.9% in Jameis Winston's corner, except for, I guess, one reporter who was like, I don't get it. But for, on the Gruden side... He has, uh, Gruden has sued the NFL and Commissioner Roger Goodell, claiming that the leaks damaged his personal reputation and destroyed his career. He is seeking monetary damages. A hearing in the case is expected to be conducted in Nevada Supreme Court today. Wow. So this will move very quickly, just, I would imagine, depending on the result of the suit. Damn. That's crazy. Today. Um, all right. Make sure you hit that like button, share button, comment button, subscribe if you're not already done so. We'll be back with you tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. No show on Friday. Oh. Uh, no show on Friday. Got a uh, doctor's appointment. Uh, Friday morning tooth uh, not a tooth but I got a problem with a tooth uh, full full Been blown fi- full blown physical uh, uh, Friday cough morning. yes uh. did I say one finger Ish. me too <laughs> <laughs> uh, alright we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7am my hands are cold doc <laughs> why don't you open that Bass Pro pool for me <laughs> Through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collada show. Come have a good time. It's the hottest show around. We ain't got a flex. Call up G. We get it done. We earning our respect. Tell recruits to let us in. Where they going next? Throw up the L's. Now we lit. Band playing neck. From the booth to the east to the west coast. No matter where we at, we live. Mic'd up for show. Open up the phone lines. Come and join the show. Make sure you tell your friends about Jordan Collada show. Yeah, Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collada show. Come have a good time. Monday through Friday from 7 to 9. Yeah, you see the notification. We about to go live. We got all your favorite guests. We got them in line. It's the Jordan Collada show. Come have a good time. Yeah. through friday from seven to nine yeah you see the notification we about to go live we got all your favorite guests we got them in line it's the jordan collada show come have a good time it's the hottest show around we ain't gotta flex call up g we get it done we earning our respect tell recruits to let us in where they going next throw up the l's now we lit band playing neck from the boot to the east to the west coast no matter where we at we live mic'd up for show open up the phone lines come and join the show make sure you Tell your friends about Jordan Collada show, yeah. Monday through Friday.